for any of you who have worked on multi-carb motorcycles, you probably know that it's it's not easy to get the carburetors synchronized with one another. And uh, what synchronizing carbs basically means is that the butterfly valves will sit with respect to one another so that uh, they'll let the exact same amount of air into each cylinder when air is getting sucked through them. So that, that also means that the pressure as the cylinder is sucking air through this, the, each of the carbs, the pressure should be the same on both carbs. And uh, usually you can adjust it with a little synchronization screw there. You just adjust the position of one butterfly valve with, with respect to the other one. And there are various tools you can use to do this. And there's usually little uh, screws right in front of the carbs on the engine itself to just give you a passageway into here. And you can connect up little gauges there and get a pressure readout. And you can buy these gauges. And th these are all right. They give, the nice thing is they give you an actual value readout so you have some sort of idea as to what the actual vacuum is right in front of your carbs. But the thing I don't like about them is that they tend to jump around quite a bit at idle because of course uh, your cylinder sucks air through and then it goes through like a power stroke and then an exhaust stroke and then it sucks more air through. So there, there's there's quite a bit of lag in between each time it sucks air through. And the, this, this dial really seems to bounce back and forth quite a bit and it's just hard to get an accurate readout. So what I've decided to do is build one of these water balancers and uh, I've heard good things about it and I thought I'd give it a shot and uh, yeah today I'm going to show you guys how to make one and how to use it. We're going to need two glass bottles. I'm just using Corona bottles because they're readily available and uh, they're clear as well. Some little rubber stoppers that fit in the top of the bottles like that and these ones don't have holes pre-drilled into them so I need some drill bits and a power drill. I've also got a piece of wood I'm going to mount up on just to make sure they're somewhat stable because I don't want these bottles falling over in the middle of the tuning process and also I'm just going to use some shoe goo to seal stuff up really well. I'm also going to be using some of this five millimeter fish tank tubing. I'm going to go throw these throw these rubber stops in the freezer and uh, wait a couple hours, take them out, drill some holes in them and get started. So there's my little rubber plug. It's absolutely freezing cold right now so I'm going to see how this works. So just drill two holes right beside each other like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing to a second plug. These are some pretty crude looking holes, but uh, you know, they should work just fine. For my little bottle mount, I've taken a pencil and just sketched out the bottle's shape on this piece of wood. And I've also washed off the bottles to make sure they're nice and clean. I'm gonna use some of the shoe goo to just glue them together and to the platform, so. Now I should be able to stick the bottles together and secure them to the base. Now to make your little tube assembly, you'll need one chunk that'll go pretty much from the bottom of one bottle to the bottom of the other one. It's probably a good idea to leave a, about a quarter inch or a half inch of room. Snip that off like that and then cut the remainder of your tube in two. So you have probably a good, I'd say three feet on either end. Yeah, that should work. Here's the finished assembly. I have a three foot long chunk of tube, which will end up going to the first cylinder, and that comes into the first bottle here through the stopper, and about a quarter inch down. And then I have that bridge that goes from about a half inch off the bottom of the first bottle, up, across, and down to about a half inch off the bottom of the second bottle. And then I have another little three foot uh, chunk piece of tube and it'll go to the second cylinder. I'm just going to secure these in place with some shoe goo uh, and uh, wait till it all hardens up and I'll show you how to use it. So I think all the glue is dry. Now to finish it off I put a little bit of dye in the bottom of one bottle. I'm just going to fill it up with water. and then just blow some air into the bottle with the water in it. That'll just transfer some over to the other bottle. On the lower half of the screen you'll see I have a gauge that'll just give me a reading of what sort of pressure I'm sucking out of one of the bottles. And uh, you'll see that the needle doesn't really move that much and the water level will change at a fairly quick rate. Right, so you get the idea as to how sensitive this system is and how well it should work. 
So here's my little rig. I've got one of the tubes connected into the first synchronization port, and the other tube connected into the other port. And then that just lead, leads back to that device I made earlier. And I've just, with a Sharpie, I just wrote in counterclockwise and clockwise on these bottles, and I just worked out which one, like I know that this one will rise if I twist my little synchronization screw. There it is right there. If I twist that guy clockwise, this one will rise. If I twist it counterclockwise, this one will rise. So like, if, if it's going like this, I know I have to twist it counterclockwise to bring this guy back up. It's probably also worth mentioning that uh, everything else on your bike should be working fine before you do this. Like if one of your cylinders isn't firing or something, this probably isn't going to fix anything. Like uh, before I did this, I checked the valve clearance. That's all good. I put new plugs in here. Plugs are cheap. And you know, if you have a bad plug, no amount of tuning is going to fix that. And I also cleaned up my carbs, put all the settings back to their original ones. I adjusted those little air screws in there. Can't really see them very well. Put the air screws back to their stock settings and check the float heights. Uh, yeah, just general stuff like that. Make sure there's no huge gaps in your exhaust system. But anyways, if all that other stuff is good, this should give you positive results. So with that out of the way, I'm gonna fire this bike up and I'll probably just position the camera right there so you can see exactly what's happening. I just shut the bike off now, but you can see that the clockwise one was just rising super fast. So that tells me that the carbs are a fair bit out of sync. So I'm just going to give the synchronization screw a counterclockwise twist and see what that gives me. All right, that's good. Now the opposite thing is happening. Counterclockwise is rising, so I'm just going to give it a clockwise twist. So I think that's about as good as one can hope for. The water levels are a little bit different, but they're not changing. So, you know, that's like maybe one quarter of an inch in water. So I think I'm going to call it a day. I have to lock that tightened down. So anyways, uh, I'll take it for a ride and see how it performs. I definitely felt a slight power increase. Uh, the throttle seemed a little more responsive and smoother for that matter. So I would definitely recommend this as a uh, relatively cheap way to synchronize your carbs. If you're looking for something to do this weekend, uh, you may just find you get positive results out of this.